As the world attempts to move away from fossil fuels to more sustainable forms of energy production, it got me thinking about a specific type of energy storage, hydrogen. For those of you who don't know, hydrogen will quite possibly be the fuel of the future. It has a very quick combustion rate and a rather large specific energy. It can also be put into a fuel cell to create electricity at ridiculously high levels of efficiency in the range of 60 to 87 percent. However, it doesn't stop there, as pure hydrogen burns completely clean, only producing water vapor. The issue with hydrogen is it is difficult to make on a large scale without the use of fossil fuels. Typically, the way hydrogen is made is through steam methane reforming natural gas. The process uses superheated steam at around 700 to 1000 degrees Celsius along with a catalyst to produce hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. About 95% of all hydrogen is made this way, which not only requires methane to be broken down, but also fossil fuels to heat the steam to such high temperatures. This process also produces an extremely poisonous gas, carbon monoxide. I think we can all agree that obtaining hydrogen this way is less than ideal. But what if instead of creating hydrogen on Earth, we went out and collected it from other planets. This would solve the problems of the polluting effects of making it through steam reformation. The clear choice would be Jupiter, as the sun is much too hot to collect any resources from it, and Jupiter is much closer to Earth than the other gas giants. The composition of Jupiter is ideal for collecting hydrogen, as nearly 90% of the atmosphere is made from it. The other 10% is helium, with trace amounts of methane. Collecting the hydrogen would be a massive engineering feat. The rocket would likely be fitted with huge tanks that can collect and hold compressed hydrogen. In order not to slow down too much, it is proposed the rocket would skim the upper atmosphere of hydrogen, and because it is lighter than helium, the hydrogen collected would be near pure. To accommodate these massive rockets, a staging place would need to be set up, away from Earth as taking off that would be near impossible in Earth's gravity. Landing on the moon would provide the conditions needed, as the gravity is only about one-sixth as strong and there is little to no atmosphere. The rockets would be able to slowly accelerate to faster speeds in a vacuum, which is much more efficient than taking off from Earth. With the gaseous hydrogen on the moon, conditions are good to turn it into its liquid state. Cooling the hydrogen down is much easier on the moon as the ambient temperatures when the sun sets is minus 173 degrees Celsius. Turning the hydrogen into a liquid requires minus 252 degrees Celsius. Once in its liquid state, the hydrogen would then be transported from the moon to Earth, where the hydrogen could then be unloaded. Now that we have the details out of the way, it is time to figure out if this would result in a net gain of hydrogen, or if the rockets would simply use too much propellant for this to be feasible. We'll start off by looking at some specs of Saturn V to give us a reference. The Saturn V had a weight of 2.6 million kilograms when fully fueled at launch, and about 80% of that was fuel. That means that the Saturn V carried about 2.1 million kilograms of fuel, including the liquid oxygen. With those numbers in mind, we can predict that a rocket launched from the moon with similar specs to those could carry about six times the payload as the gravity is one-sixth as powerful. So in theory, the tanker rockets that have traveled to Jupiter and back could have two tanks, each weighing 354,000 kilograms for a combined total of 708,000 kilograms. Now assuming the tanks are made of carbon fiber lined with aluminum for weight considerations, the best numbers I could find were 1,540 liters per thousand kilograms. This works out to the tanks being able to hold a total of over 1 million liters of hydrogen. If this was able to be compressed to 700 bar, or 700 times normal atmospheric conditions on Earth, the hydrogen would have a density of 42 kilograms per meter cubed. This means that 42,000 kilograms of hydrogen could be stored. Now this hardly compares to the 2.1 million kilograms of fuel the Saturn V needed. But we also need to remember that over 60% of that weight was liquid oxygen, not actual propellant. Also, the first stage of Saturn V was powered by kerosene, 
which is both heavier and has a lower specific energy than hydrogen. While the amount of hydrogen gathered would likely offset the hydrogen needed to launch the rocket tankers, another consideration is getting the hydrogen from the moon to Earth. This would likely push the amount of hydrogen used past the amount gathered, rendering the idea simply a fantasy for right now. While a very cool idea, when actually put into practice, the mining of Jupiter would not be a hydrogen profitable process, at least not with today's technologies. But who knows, maybe in the future it will become a reality. If you enjoyed this video, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe button, and I will see you soon with a brand new video.